semiconductor design team working out of this facility. Tamil Nadu is a great talent state. It has superb talent. It has created so many good technologies. And today's Qualcomm Design Center is one more milestone in Tamil Nadu's talent journey. What's so special about this center is semiconductor design will be done from end to end, correct? For long, a large part of the design was done in India, but if from end to end, getting final product from end to end, that is what is so special about today's program and this center. This is a this is a Qualcomm board. The chips that you see here, these three chips, Wi-Fi 3, 4, Wi-Fi 5, 6, and 7. These three chips will be designed fully to end in this center. So as you are aware, as part of our semiconductor mission, our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji's vision is to create the entire value chain of semiconductor in India. Starting with design, fabrication, ATMP. Below that, the talent pool. Below that, the entire gases, chemicals, that ecosystem. And the layer below that, that is the layer for semiconductor equipment. So as you are aware, yesterday, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, he laid the foundation stone for three projects, one fab and two ATMP units. Before that, Micron ATMP unit was inaugurated and construction is going on at a very fast pace. So, now we have the design capability, we have the fabrication capability, and we have the entire ATMP capability. And we have program with 104 universities. 104 universities spread all over the country where world's latest design tools, semiconductor design tools, they are available to the students to learn, to experiment, to try out new ideas. And that has really picked up so well. We also have now applied materials, which is one of the world's, which is actually the largest equipment manufacturing company for semiconductors. That has set up their unit in Bangalore, where they are designing the equipment which manufacture semiconductors. We also have LAM Research, which has now set up a center in IISC Bangalore for their semiverse. Semiverse is like a metaverse in which you go and the students can learn exact way the fabrication has to be done. It's a very advanced and already 35 students have enrolled in it. So, friends, what the point that I wanted to make is our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, has today created the entire semiconductor value chain, the entire ecosystem, the talent pipeline, in our country, and that is the foundation for a developed nation. Because semiconductor is the gateway to so many other industries. Semiconductor is the gateway to your automobile industry, to industrial electronics, to laptops, to servers, to mobile phones, to consumer electronics like refrigerator, TV, to transportation like trains, aeroplanes, scooty, bike, car, 
practically everything that we use in our lives today, everything that is switched on or switched off, that uses a semiconductor. So it's very important to get this value chain in India. I'm so happy with today's inauguration, practically every piece of the ecosystem, every piece of the value chain is now set. And in the next term of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, we will build upon this base and create a very strong semiconductor industry in our country. We'll also look at developing many chipsets from end to end. We'll look at many new products which we will develop fully in our country. We'll look at many different verticals of electronics where we'll go deep. And today I had a discussion with uh, Mr. Cristiano Amon, the CEO of uh, Qualcomm. We agreed that Qualcomm will partner with Government of India and the state governments to create a roadmap for developing industrial electronics, for developing automobile electronics, for developing telecom electronics, and for developing more design capabilities in our country. We also agreed that like the, like the 100 5G labs that we have set up across the country, we have set up 100 5G labs. On the same scale, we will set up 6G labs in our country so that the students can get more opportunities for creating the 6G solutions. As you are aware, our Prime Minister has taken a very clear goal for the country that the days of 2G, which were very different days, they are passed behind us now. In 5G, we have become equal to the world, better than the world. And in 6G, we will lead the world. So that is the pace at which we will work. I'll now take questions. And uh, after, after the first round, I'll discuss two more things about railways. Okay, questions. Your voice is good. Thank you. Uh, Sir, good morning. I'm Yogesh Kabudas from Times of India. Sir, you said that uh, the government will, set, will be setting up uh, 60 labs across the country. Uh, how many labs are likely to be set up and uh, what, are, what, what are the features that these facilities will have, sir? So I'll tell about the 5G labs that we have already set up, right? And we are in the process of setting up. Uh, in these labs, we create an environment where you get a 5G set up in a box. It's a it's size of, I would say, um, let's say, one rack, basically one rack, which has practically everything that goes in a 5G setup, right? And uh, then the students are getting access to the design of 5G-based solutions. For example, one lab in Maharashtra, the students of that lab, they are focused on how do we create highly efficient water for, uh, for farmland, for irrigation. How do we create a solution where the farmers can use the 5G technology to supply water to the crops in the most efficient way with minimum wastage. There is another lab in Haryana which has focused on uh, what bee culture is, apiary. When you, uh, beehives and all, right, for uh, producing honey. So they are creating solutions for that. So I gave you two very, exa two examples which are very different from the mainstream examples. A lot of people are working on healthcare, lots of students are working on uh, education, lots of students are working on many other solutions. So it's a very unique way of unlocking for basically bringing out the energies, say harmonizing the energies of young students. Uh, <coughs> Raj Suman from Business Line. Uh, I just wanted to check uh, on the fab uh, 
and also the entire ecosystem you mentioned on semiconductor. Can you give a kind of an idea as to what could be the cumulative investment we are talking about in the entire ecosystem, right from the design up to the production level? Uh, the number, the second question is, uh, we see that this uh, ecosystem seems to be developing strong in terms of the production in the north, whereas the south seems to be more focused on the design research. Uh, so is there something which, something is missing between, between the gap seems to be two different set of things are happening? So first about investment, second about uh, what does it take to develop an ecosystem, right? So the investment in the four projects which have been approved and where the construction has started, which are basically manufacturing, which is not part of the design, right? This is of the order of about um, a lakh and 60,000 crore. One lakh 60,000 crore. That is the order of the investment which is going in this. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. In the next five years, we should be seeing at least four or five more fabs and many more ATMP units. Now, when we started this journey on uh, 15th uh, December 2021, our Prime Minister approved the India Semiconductor Mission. When we started interacting with the semiconductor companies, one of the fundamental things which they came out with, there is a series of gases and chemicals almost about 250 very specialized gases and chemicals which are required in the manufacturing of semiconductors. So when we started interacting with the uh, gas companies and chemical companies, the fundamental thing that came out of those discussions is that there is a very large chemical hub in a place called The Hage. D-A-H-E-J in Gujarat, that the Hage chemical hub is practically among the top, I wouldn't have the exact ranking, but it is among the top 20 chemical hubs in the entire world. In the entire world. That was something which uh, started about uh, 20 years back. And within those 20 years, uh, 25 years almost, that the Hage has become a very large chemical and gas hub. They are the guys who can handle practically every super specialized chemical in the way the semiconductor industry wants it to. So that gave a lot of comfort. We had actually three workshops of all the chemical guys from all over the world and each one of them when they came and scouted around the country they found a lot of comfort in the hedge. So that's the practical reason how the kind of there is a gravitation towards uh, a place where there is a lot of chemical industry already present. From our side, we have been very clear and open to give opportunities to any state who would like to focus on this industry because this industry is very important for our future. And I'm so happy that at least eight more states are working very seriously now, having seen the success of the last uh, four projects. They are working very seriously for future projects. We will be, as, I, as I've said in the past, semiconductor mission is a mission for 20 years. Our Prime Minister, our Prime Minister has given us a clear roadmap for 20 years. So this will become a major industry in our country. Hello, sir. I, Sindhu from the business line. I'd just like to know, uh, is there plans to extend the design-linked incentive scheme given that, you know, we have to kind of support both manufacturing and design parallelly? Uh, what, what is the uh, deployment like currently and is there plans to kind of extend that scheme? Absolutely. Design-linked incentives have come up very well both in semiconductor and in telecom. Both the places today, we have uh, startups, we have mid-sized companies, we have established groups who are working very seriously on creating IP in our country, for creating full designs in our company. For example, 
the radios that you see on telecom towers, those large radios, right? Those tall equipment that you see on the telecom towers. Today, radios designed in India as a part of the DLI scheme, manufactured in India, they are now exported to 14 countries, including US, right? So that's the change which has happened. So we will be focusing a lot on supporting the design initiatives across the across industrial, defense, across uh, telecom, consumer, practically every aspect of electronics. Uh, so Varun from Phone Arena. My question to you is on the satellite broadband. So could you comment on the state of it and when we would see something like Starlink in India? Because you're on a Digital India mission and most parts of the country are connected, but there's still parts of the country which are which can benefit from satellite broadband. So your thoughts on that? See, we had a serious uh, a technical issue regarding how should we allocate spectrum for satellite because for satellite communication like um, in case of uh, tower to tower point to point communication satellite communication also the same frequency band can be reused multiple times right so when something is reused multiple times then the it's like infinite supply theoretically very high supply and the demand can always be met out of that very high level of supply. So that's why in the telecom bill, we had a provision where the uh, spectrum and the spectrum for backhaul will be allocated on administrative basis after TRI does the entire process of consultation. So with that, uh, legal and uh, policy framework available now, we are now going forward in that direction. And we should be seeing good uh, progress in satellite communication. In parallel, there are a lot many startups, lot many innovative young engineers who have created new solutions for satellite. Uh, just a follow-up question on the design part. Uh, one of the issues uh, which has been in the past is even though the design is being done here, but ultimately the IP rests with the company, which and most of our, the income goes to them, for instance, Apple or Qualcomm for that. So how do you stop this? Maybe is some kind of a policy kind of should be brought in where the IP also should rest in uh, India? Listen, today we are getting one after the other. We are seeing that the increase in number of patents filed in India is substantial. It's really substantial. I am uh, very happy that even in railways, we have recently got a patent for Kavach. A patent for Kavach has been awarded very recently, just a few couple few days back. We also got the patent for our 4G solution, which is now getting deployed on BSNL, BSNL network. So we become part of that very small club of countries, very small, just about four countries, which have the end-to-end -end telecom technology. So that is the pace at which we are moving. Now, in, increasingly, IPR is now getting developed and owned by our companies here. And it's a process which has really accelerated in the last few years. Okay. I'll come to two more announcements about railways. Friends, as you are aware, our Vande Bharat train has been very successful and uh, it has really, um, it has really caught the attention of our middle classes, of our travelers and uh, youngsters, aspirational generation. The wheels that are used in Vande Bharat they are of a special quality, a special uh, manufacturing process called forging process. So the wheels that we use in wagons are casting process, are manufactured using a process called casting process. Casting is done in Bengaluru and for the forging process, which is a very new and a very advanced method of manufacturing the wheels, is being done in Tamil Nadu. The factory has, uh, the factory is now being set up, construction has started, and uh, 
it will have a huge capacity. It will have a capacity of 2,50,000 wheels every year. 80,000 wheels out of this 2,50,000 will be consumed in India and the balance 1,70,000 wheels will be exported. So, for 60-70 years, India was an importer of forged wheels. India was an importer of forged wheels. Ever since we started uh, using forged wheels way back in 1960s, now, from being an importer, India will emerge as the major exporter of forged wheels. So I'm very happy that this plant is being set up in Milnard. The construction work has started already. And in another 16 to 18 months, the production will start from Tamil Nadu. Second, in the ICF factory, in the ICF factory, we are starting the development of standard gauge Vande Bharat. As you are aware, standard gauge is the gauge, gauge is the distance between two tracks, right? So the standard gauge is the gauge which is used all over the world. So when we are thinking of exporting Vande Bharat few years down the line, we must start the development of standard gauge Vande Bharat today. Because manufacturing it, designing it, testing it, getting the national and international approvals, this is a very long and tedious process. But we start today, in five years from now, we will have a good standard gauge product which will be ready for exports. So I'm very happy that in railways, two major contributions will be done out of Tamil Nadu. One is a standard gauge Vande Bharat, already the Vande, first Vande Bharat which is used in all our network today is manufactured in ICF, designed in ICF. The same thing will also be for the export potential of Vande Bharat. So I thought I'll share these two uh, interesting developments with all of you. Uh, it's a joint venture of Ramakrishna Forging, Ramakrishna Forging and Titagar Wagons. It's a joint venture of them. Uh, the plant is just very close to Chennai. Uh, I do you have the I. Uh, We'll be able to share the exact location with you. It's very close to Chennai. Uh, significant investment. We don't have the exact numbers. The first uh, phase is about 650 crore odd. Sir, I have a small question about uh, Tamil Nadu railways. Uh, there is any plan See, for convert? One second. Will railways can be a press conference of five hours, right? So next time when I come today, our focus was on semiconductor. And uh, I would like you to see how great emphasis our Prime Minister is putting on the entire value chain and in the entire ecosystem. This is the point I would like you to, uh, I, I would like to share with you and like you to understand and help you and seek your help in taking that point to the entire country. Thank you. The, the wheel plant is at a place called Gumdi Puri. Gumdi Puri. Gumdi Pundia.
हेलो नमस्कार यू वॉचिंग डी टी टी वी एम तानिया नेजा वेल वी ऑल 